Okay, let's try one more of these problems where you change the concentration and then you find and then you see how it affects the rate. So you should be experts at this by now. So you want to determine the rate law. They're usually set up the same way. Determine the rate law, then solve for k, and then given a new uh, new concentrations, solve for the rate once you know the rate law. So determine the rate law for this reaction. So the first thing you want to do is find two experiments that you're going to compare and then um, solve for m and n. So these guys are staying the same. This one's changing, this one's changing. So I'm going to put 2 over 1. Whoops. So we'll do rate 2 over rate 1. Okay. So we have... Okay. So we have 2.46 times 10 to the negative 3, and then 1.23 times the negative 3. K times concentration, concentration, and on the bottom you have K times concentration, concentration. And then you just have to read them off. So rate 2, I have a 0 0.1 and 0 0.2. Uh, for rate 1, I have 0.1 and 0.1. So 2.46 divided by 1.23, that gives me about 2. My k's cancel, 0.1 to the m cancels. And I have 0.2 over 0.1 gives me 2 raised to the n, so I know that n is going to be 1. That's easy enough. Now let's compare, pick another one. Um, so if I did, so I did 1 and 2. If I tried 1 and 3, this guy is changing, and this guy is staying the same. Good, I'll do that one. Um, you don't want to do 2 and 3 because they're both changing. So I'm going to compare 1 and 3 this time. So I'm going to put 3 on top because the rate is bigger. So I'm going to do rate 3 over rate 1. Rate 3 over rate 1, and rate 3 looks like 4.92 times 10 to the negative 3, 1.23 times 10 to the negative 3, and that's k times concentration, times concentration, k to the n to the n. All right, so row 3, it's experiment 3, so I have 0 0.2, 0 0.1, and then uh, 1 is 0.1 and 0.1. So 4.92 divided by 1.23 gives me about 4. 4.0, k's cancel, 0.1 to the n, 0.1 to the n, those cancel. 0.1 divided by 0.2, it's just 2 to the m, so this time m is equal to 2. So you can see how m and n are not the same. Um, if you wanted to find the overall order, overall would be 1 plus 2 gives me 3, so it's third order overall. Uh, the rate law, since we're going to need that a lot, I'm going to put it in green here. Rate is equal to k times no to the m and then h2 to the 1. So that's what your rate law looks like. Make sure that you don't confuse m and n. Um, we, it just happened that we solved for n first and then we solved for m, but the one that make sure that um, you put it to the right exponent. It's really easy to switch those around just because you solve for this one first doesn't mean it's M. It was the second one. It was this guy first and then that one. All right, so this is our rate law. This is what we're going to refer back to. Now if we want to find the rate constant, we're, we know we're going to pick just to pick experiment one. I know this rate. I know these concentrations. And now I'm going to solve for K. Okay, so that's our, our rate. So we'll just pick one out there. 1.23 times 10 to the negative 3. Oops, you can't see that. There it is. Uh, and that's the units are molar per second. And the concentrations here are just 0.1 and 0.1. Molar per second is equal to k times 0.1 molar. And since we're plugging this into the rate law, that becomes squared. And this is 0.1 molar as well. And now just with a little bit of math, um, you can solve for that. So if you want to simplify on that one side, that's fine. Okay, so on the right-hand side, I have k times 
0.001. So I did 0.1 squared times 0.1 gives me 0.001. And my units are molar squared times another molar, which is molar cubed, equals this 1.23 times 10 to negative 3 molar per second. Now I can just divide by 0 0.001 molar cubed, 001 molar cubed, which just gives me 1.23. One of these molars cancels one of those, one over molar squared times second. And we only have two sig figs, so this becomes 1.2, one over molar squared times second. So we, this is third order overall, which means um, the molar constant, the, the molar units on the bottom there are one less than the overall order. Another way to write that would be 1.2 molar negative 2 times seconds. So just to, to recap there with the units, molar squared times molar gives us that molar cubed. Now I have that molar cubed on the bottom. I have a one molar on top, so one molar cancels one of those molars. That's how I end up with those two molars on the bottom. This is equal to your rate constant. So going back to the rate law, now I know the rate law, right? This is the, the rate law is the whole equation. Now I know K, they're gonna give me new concentrations and I'm gonna solve for the rate. So going back here, the rate law looks like rate is equal to K, which I know right there, times NO squared times H2. That's what my rate law looks like, right? K times NO squared times H2. Now, they give me new concentrations, and I'm going to plug those in to solve for a new rate. So rate is equal to K that I got in part B, 1.2, 1 over molar squared times seconds, right? That's our K. NO is 0 0.050. Don't forget to square it, because that's how it is in the rate law. And then 0 0.150 molar. Sorry, wrote over there. Okay. Um, so when you work all that out, look at it, look at the units again. Molar squared times molar over molar squared. And so uh, this, these molar squares cancel those molar squares. And I end up with one molar on top. And when you work out this whole rate, we get about 4.6 times 10 to the negative 4 molar per second. So your units are important. Don't forget about your units. So again, just to summarize how we do these problems, first step, solve for M and N, and you get your rate law. So you solve for M and N. And if N is 1 or M is 1, you just don't, you don't even have to put it. If you put it there, it's not wrong. That's fine. You can put it up there just to remind yourself that there, there's a 1 there. If it's a 0, then you usually just don't include that concentration at all, because anything raised to the 0th power is just going to give you 1. And 1 times, this is just going to be itself. So I solve for M and N, and then once I know M and N, I take um, the rate and the concentrations from the table and solve for K. So that's what I did down here. I took the rate from the table, the two concentrations from the table, I solve for K, and then in part B or part C, I plug my K in, they give me new concentrations, and I solve for the rate. So again, you're going to do two labs just like this on all this stuff.